Dama Adama Kichuna Bachila Jachi Adile Kakola Kahe Premananda Emona Goranga Ridoya Dadi Abola Baja Goranga Kaha Goranga Laha Gorangera Namare Jejana Goranga Baja Sehoyamara Pranare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Yesya Eva Padambuja Bhakti Labya Prema Bhidana Parama Pumarta Tasmai Jagan Mangala Mangalaya Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Madhgavira Pigopala Sri Kriyat Kripaya Jari Tadaiva Sambhaya Pidva Rishi Yustad Priya Janaha Sri Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Sasanatana Rupaka Gopala Raghunathapta Brajabala Bapahima Vancha Kopatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patitanam Pavanhebhyo Vaishnabhebhyo Monamaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Nice to see everybody here today and even Anna Piney Rod is here today. We went to uh, see Dr. Dave Das today. And uh, he was, I, actually, I saw the poster of your, your talk coming up, <laughs> an Ayurvedic thing. And he gave me a bunch of plants, to, or cuttings and stuff, and some different things. We're going to, I put in some pots today. That's good. Um, so today we're going to continue. I, I, it's such a uh, big subject. I, we're not going to finish this subject today. We've already spoken, uh, I think, what, uh, eight times. Is that right? Yeah, eight times about this uh, particular subject of Anarpita Chiram Chirat. Uh, <laughs> and how what he's giving has not been given in a long, long time. Amazing, amazing subject. So stay tuned. And uh, we'll go on. I hope everybody's having a really blissful Kartik. Let me paste in the shloka and we'll uh, go ahead and recite this. Anarpita chirim chirat karuna avatirna kolo samarpaitam anuchula rasam svabhakti shriham hari purata sundara duti kadamba sandipita sadaridaya kandare spuratuva Sachinandanaha. Anapaini Radha, would you like to read the translation, please? Yeah, I can. May the Supreme Lord, who is known as the son of Shrimati Shachi Devi, be transcendentally situated in the innermost chamber of your heart. Resplendent with the radiance of molten okay, gold. Jaguar, would you, could you read the translation, please? Can you hear me okay? Oops, Krishna. I'm sorry. Uh, can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, I read the half. <laughs> okay, can I start I, from, from the beginning? Let, let, let Lana Piney read it. I'm sorry, I had the headphones plugged in too. Can you guys hear me okay? 
Yeah. Okay, let me. Uh... Yeah. May the Supreme Lord. Uh oh. It's kind of. Oh. Should I read it again? Yeah. Okay. May the Supreme Lord, who is known as the son of Srimati Shachi Devi, be transcendentally situated in the innermost chamber of your heart. Resplendent with the radiance of molten gold, he has appeared in the age of Kali by his causeless mercy to bestow what no incarnation has ever offered before, the most sublime and radiant mellow of devotional service, the mellow of conjugal love. Thank you. Our uh, connection is going a little funny, so I hope we'll all be here. If I go out, just uh, hang tight and come back. So in our last session, we spoke something about Mahaprabhu's mercy and this very amazing verse from Chaitanya Chandra Dwayanatakam. Dashe kechana kechana pranayena sakete eva bhaye. Radha Madhava Nishtaya Katipaye Sri Dwara Kadishitu Sakyadav Ubayatra Kechana Pare Ye Vavatarantare Maya Bada Ridokilan Vitanavai Brindabana Sanginaha Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is speaking this verse to Advaita Acharya. And he's saying that, that those persons amongst you who are attached to serving me in Dasha Ras, Dasha Kechana, Kechana, uh, in some loving way in Dasha Ras or in uh, friendship, whatever Rasa that may be, maybe you're attached to worshiping Lord Dwarkadish, whatever that may be, I'm going to make you into my eternal associates in Goloka Vrindavan. So I want to speak a little more about what that means. It's a very amazing subject. We'd like to speak something about what the Lord's given before. Anarpita chirim chirat. That something which he hasn't given in a long, long time. And in our last session, we spoke a lot from Srila Rupa Goswami's Lagu Bhagavatamrita about how the Lord uh, can give liberation, but uh, even only Krishna gives that. But for Krishna, that's not such a hard thing, not such an astonishing thing. But to give prema, that's a very, very uh, rare thing. Shiljiva Goswami speaks about this also in Priti Sandarva in Anucheta number 16. It's an important subject for devotees. I mean, it sounds really philosophical and, and very abstract and whatever, but it's really not. Because so many of us, we want liberation, directly or indirectly. Sometimes we become frustrated when things don't go the way we, we expected them. I remember I tell the story sometimes before I was a devotee, I was living on a, an abandoned boat in Key West, Florida. And there was one uh, musician that I used to visit sometimes. And he had a, a boat that he'd salvaged. It had been sunk. And and he was with a motorboat and I went with him and as we were moving it his motorboat ran out of gas or the engine stopped or something and his really expensive yacht started washing in to smash on the rocks <laughs> and I remember him cursing he was looking up at the sky and cursing and he was saying excuse me for saying this is such a horrible thing he's saying God damn you damn you why are you doing this to me <laughs> And I've never heard him speak anything about God before. <laughs> but so many of us, even as devotees, we just naturally expect. It's kind of like also in marriage. <laughs> People don't say things even before the marriage, but they just expect it. They just expect or in friendship. That's to the part of the violence of upadis. Upadis are designations. When we give someone a designation, then we love them, but it's conditional love. And we expect something back from them. So many religionists also expect that, and we expect liberation from the Lord, directly or indirectly. That liberation, we expect that I'm not going to have any problems, everything's going to be fine. Or when I come to the society of devotees, everything's going to be good, and I'm going to like all the programs and all the classes and, and all the devotees I'm going to get along with, and the leaders are going to be just wonderful <laughs> and saintly. But 
we we're overlooking one minor detail, which is our own karma and our own need to evolve spiritually. So uh, Jiva Goswami speaks about this liberation. He says that Samipya liberation is the best, it's better than Salokya or others, where someone has, uh, uh, they're with the Lord on the same planet. Uh, that's because he says that the Lord is directly manifest outside the devotee's eyes and before, outside the devotee's heart and before his eyes. So, uh, there's an interesting discussion he gives from Braja Maharaj in the Vishnu Dharma Purana. And uh, Braja Maharaj is asking this question. He says that so, kolpa after kolpa, so many souls are the same. And, and don't they achieve liberation? And if, if they do start getting liberation one by one, then you'd expect it's going to start getting kind of lonely. And it's going to look like one of those, those uh, movies, you know, where we're, it's New York City after the atom bombs went off and everybody in the whole world is dead or something. And it's just getting more, you know, fewer and fewer people in the world. So he says, This is the answer Markandeya Rishi gives. It's a really interesting thing to me because it's practically the same answer that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives to Haridas Thakur. He says that Jivanasya Sargena, that when Nari Mukti Mupagate, when one individual soul gets Mukti, gets liberation, Achincha Shakti Bhagavan, the Lord who has these inconceivable potencies, replaces him, Jagat Parayate Sada, by creating another soul, or by placing another soul there. So in this way, each individual soul exists eternally. And the Jiva Goswami says that each individual soul always existed. In other words, when um, the Lord places that soul in this material world, he's placing him from some other situation. That's a big topic. I'm not going to go in that direction today. But uh, the point is that Anarpita Chirim Chirat, that the Lord is giving something as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that hadn't been given in a long, long time. And it's something we need to get our head around. I remember having some discussion with one of my god brothers who'd heard so much from my Maharaj, but he was openly in public, strongly advocating that uh, we should think about getting liberation. And bhakti is not something we need to worry about, but we should get liberation because liberation is so important. <laughs> and, and very few people do that. But we read uh, last year in, from the 29th chapter, the third canto, about bhakti in different modes of nature. And in the 10th verse, Lord Kapila Devi describes karma, Nirhadam udishya parasmin va tad arpanam yajid yastavyam iti va pritak bhava sasatvikaha. He describes that, that this is bhakti in the mode of goodness. That someone worships the Lord, but there's still a pritak bhava. Pritak bhava means they're a separatist. They have something they want for themselves. It's ironic in, in light of the discussion we've been having in the morning from the, the 47th chapter, the 10th canto, if anybody's following that, how the gopis are independent thinkers. <laughs> they're also separatists, but they're separate from material consciousness. And here, this pretag bhav that uh, Lord Kapiladeva is speaking about means that the devotee, he's thinking about something other than the Lord. Just like so many devotees, they, they worship Gurudev. Uh, sometimes they, they, they worship and say, oh, Guru Maharaj, uh, I, I know you know, we, we love you so much, and it's your birthday, so we're going to make something for you. And they give him some nice pakoras <laughs> and something because the devotee likes those things. But Gurudev can't digest those things. So there's many devotees who do service like that. Cooking is a really good example. They cook what they like, but they're not thinking what the Lord likes. Prabhupada writes in his purport to this verse, he said, if this offering process is in the mode of goodness, Rather than in pure devotion, then the interest is different. So this is Pritag Bhava, and this is the nature of bhakti in the mode of goodness. It looks good. And the person is not a violent person. He's not criticizing other devotees. He's not a very lusty person. He's following regulated principles. But still, 
his, his bhakti is within the modes of nature, saguna bhakti. So let's visit again, for those of you who might have followed that discussion last year, just briefly, we'll go over again from the Brihan Naradiya Purana, a discussion between Dharmaraj, Yamaraj, and King Bhagirati, and he speaks about what is sattvika bhakti. Yastu sakritta papanam shayartam prachayed varim sradhaya paryopetaha sa sattvikya dhamma smita. That someone who's worshiping the Lord to uh, shayartam, artam means the purpose and shaya means to destroy, shayartam for the purpose of destroying their papa. Yastu sakritta papanam. They're doing it to destroy the pop, the sins they've done. That's a good thing. Huh? And that person, Shraddhaya Paryopetaha, they have some faith in the Lord. That person is a Sattvika Bhakta. But amongst the Sattvika Bhaktas, he says, Sa Sattvik Yadama Smita. He's Sakya uh, Sattvik Yadama. Adama. He's the Adam or the lowest amongst the Sattvika Bhaktas. He's in the mode of ignorance. So, we may question, is it really bad to be praying for, to be free from material desires? Sometimes devotees, they, they do like that. There's a famous prayer. If you go to Hungary in, in uh, New Braja Dham, they, they pray every day before Lord Nishringadev. That uh, Prahlad prays that my dear Lord, you're, uh, you're the best you're the best of the givers of benediction. If you really want to give a benediction to me, then you take away all my material desires. So this prayer, Pallad, we should note, first of all, this is not the same as the Adama Rajasik Bhakta's prayer. Prabhupada explains in his purport to that verse that Pallad's prayer to be free from material desires was motivated because out of a desire to please the Lord. It wasn't that something personal. Sometimes, so many times I see devotees and they're just so concerned about, oh my God, I have so many material desires. We, we were giving some classes uh, to some new devotees in India. That's all I want to say about it. I don't want to say the group. And I'd organized different sannyasis speaking there. And they had questions every time. And every time the questions were, Maharaj, what can I do? How can I live in the school with all these pretty girls? You know, how can I get rid of my material desires? Their, their material desires are front in their mind. And that's a sattvic bhakta. But that's an adama sattvic bhakta. That's a, the lowest amongst the sattvic bhaktas. And this is not the purpose why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, an arpita chiriam chirat. So Prahlad Maharaj is in a different category. The next in the uh, Brihan, in the uh, Brahmavivarta Purana, it describes the Madhyam Sattika Bhakta. Hare Ridam Priya Miti Sushusham Kurute Tu Vaha Tu Yaha Shraddhaya Sam Yuto Bhuyaha Sattviki Madhyama Tu Sa. Someone is thinking Hare Ridam Priya Miti, that this is something which is Priya is very dear to the Lord. And if someone's serving the Lord in that way, and they have some faith that bhakti, they have faith in bhakti, that person, sattviki madhyama tusa, he's a, a madhyam sattvika bhakta. He's thinking about the pleasure of the Lord, but subtly that consideration is not for the Lord's pleasure. It's just like uh, a boy <laughs> who wants to, he, he's very attracted by a girl. And so he wants to find out some things about her. What does she like? What kind of movies does she like? What kind of food does she like? What kind of sweets does she like? And so he buys those sweets for her. And that's nice. He's thinking about her pleasure. But his purpose in thinking about her, her pleasure is not for him, is not for her pleasure. <laughs> it's for himself. His motivation is, is flawed in this way. And therefore, real bhakti begins with sarnagati, and then comes suda bhakti. Then there's the uttam sattva bhakta, vidi budya charit yastu das ava chipatim nipa bhakti nam pravarasa tu uttama sattviki smita. That someone who serves the Lord as a servant, dasa 
they, with the knowledge that this is given in Shastra, that I should do this thing, that devotee, Uttama Satika Smita, he's the best of all the Satika Bhaktas. So that devotee, he's the best because he's following Shastra. And Shastra says that we should serve the Lord, and therefore he surrenders to the Lord. But still, his motivation is Saguna Bhakti. It's within the Gunas. He's not doing it purely out of a desire to serve and please the Lord. And this is not what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. We should understand. In uh, the Krama and uh, this, this verse we're just reading from Jiva Goswami comments, Atta Kaivalya Kama Satvikyeva, that the desire for liberation or Kaivalya, that's in, in the mode of goodness. And someone who's aiming for that, who offers their actions to the Lord and worships the Lord, uh, thinking that, that this is a daily rule, this is for everybody, this is something we all have to do, but they're desiring something other than the Lord himself, other than the Lord's pleasure. They're pretag bhav, they're a separatist. They're thinking that liberation is the topmost thing. Try to understand, dear devotees, this topic is such a very, very subtle topic. We may think that, that, oh, this is not very important. What's important is we just chant Hare Krishna. It is important, but what is our motivation in chanting Hare Krishna? What is our consciousness in chanting Hare Krishna? It's such a very, very important thing. So although this type of bhakti is superior to others, because the practitioner wants something other than, than the Lord, it's still saguna bhakti. It's still under the modes of material nature. And it's not sattva, it's not pure bhakti, it's not pure devotion. We want to cultivate pure devotion. And that pure devotion is something very, very rare. So we were hearing about how Krishna, only Krishna gives liberation. And oh, excuse me, only Krishna, only Krishna gives liberation, only Krishna gives bhakti. So in the Chaitanya Chaitanya there's a beautiful discussion in Adi Lila chapter three where uh, Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami presents, he looks into a window into the mind of Krishna. And Krishna says, Yateshta Bihari Krishna Kore Antardana Antardana Kore Mane Kore Anuman Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So Krishna comes and he does his Bihar. He enjoys like anything. But then, Antardan, he makes his disappearance. And at that time, when he disappears, Mani Kori Anman, he starts thinking to himself. And what does he think? Chira Kala Nahi Kori Prema Bhakti Dan Bhakti Vina Jagatera Nahi Avastan Chirakala, very similar to the point being made in this verse, huh? Anarpita Chiram Chirat. Huh? That uh, Chirakala, for a long time, Nahi Kori Prema Bhakti done. For a long time, I haven't given this Prema Bhakti done, this wealth of Bhakti. Huh? And he says, Bhakti Vina Jagatera Nahi Avastan. Without that Bhakti, this material universe, it's just useless, it has no purpose. So we should understand, this is the purpose of this universe. And uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he comes, he inspires the devotees in that bhakti. And then uh, a few verses later, Kaviraj Goswami describes his mind. Krishna says, Yuga Dharma Pravartana Hoya Amsa Hoite Ami Vina Anye Nare Braja Prema Dite Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. As we were discussing in uh, some of our previous sessions from Lagu Bhagavatamrita, uh, how different incarnations can, they can give the Yuga Dharma, Yuga Dharma Pavartana, Hoya Ang Sahoite. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, my expansions, they can give that. Uh, but ama vina anye nari braja prema diti. No one but me, however, can give braja prema. Now, incidentally, this verse and a few verses in the same section 
are uh, fuel a, con a uh, controversy within Gaudiya Vaishnavism, and I'm not going to champion that, that discussion, but just to inform you a little bit about it, so you, in case you're interested, uh, some Vaishnavas, quite a few Vaishnavas in our line, they say that uh, Kalki Avatar doesn't come in this Kali Yuga, in this Danya Kali Yuga, because these verses in Adi Lila chapter 3 describe that when I, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes, when Krishna comes in Adi 3 and Adi 4, it's described, that uh, then there's no need for the regular avatar and they don't come. Whatever, he, whatever that regular avatar does is done by uh, avatari, by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming to give. Mm -hmm. Amavina Anyanari Braja Prema Diti. He's giving this Braj Prem. What to speak of, speaking about liberation, many devotees, they think, well, you know, we're, we're bhaktas, and, and, and anyway, are you a bhakta of Hanuman? Are you a bhakta of Lord Ramachandra? Are you a bhakta of Nishringadev, or this or that? And they don't understand what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. It doesn't mean that someone can't be a devotee of Lord Ramachandra or Lord Nishringadev or any of the different avatars. But if they're focused on that personality and they're not worshipping Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then they can't get that thing that, that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give, which we began by discussing uh, Mahaprabhu's words to Advaita Chaya from Kavi Karnapur's Chaitanya Chaya and Chandradaya Natakam, that regardless of what incarnation of the Lord you're attached to, whatever rasa you're attached to, I'm going to give you this uh, Ujvala Ras, I'm going to give you this topmost thing, I'm going to give you Goloka Vrindavan. In Bhaktivinoda Thakur and some of our acharyas described that someone may have a position in two different places within the spiritual world. It's possible. Nice to see all these comments. I'll, I'll read over these in a little bit later. So what is this Braj Prem? Huh? I'd like to read you some uh, description from uh, Gopal Champu. Hmm. Loka Srinata Loka Pratyuchi Bidji Kananam Sri Spri Hajid Vasa Sri Rajadani Nikila Subaruchyam Vasenas Tata Eva Bhokta Krishna Sabogya Pranaya Madhurima Saswat Ityeva Masmin Pratekam Sarvam Antakarana Maitigatam Kastad Antam Labhita He says that this beauty of Goloka Vrindavan, it far, far surpasses the beauty that you may find in Vaikuntha. And in particular, what does he speak about when he speaks about the beauty of uh, Goloka Vrindavan? <laughs> huh? well, what does he say? He says, the forest of Vrindavan. Huh? This forest of Vrindavan is what's so very, very special. The forest of Vrindavan is so beautiful, so wonderful, that it exceeds the desires of Lakshmi Devi. And in Goloka Vrindavan, all the splendor, the, the auspiciousness and beauty and wonder of Vaikuntha resides, but there's more. And he says that there's no equal, Bhokta Krishna Sabogya Pranaya Madhuri Masasvati Deva Masman. There's no equal to the inhabitants of Goloka Vrindavan. Krishna there, he's a bogya, he's the enjoyer. And that sweetness of Prem, that is enjoyed constantly there. Pratyegam sarvam antakarnam adigatam kastad antam labhita. Krishna uh, surpasses the individual and collective minds of all persons. We may think about Krishna individually. We may try to we'll have a, 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 what do you call him, a group think about it and try to understand Krishna together. But Jiva Goswami says that Krishna surpasses you can't consider, you can't understand Krishna as an individual or even collectively. So what is the end of Krishna's glories? So then he speaks, he says that, that Krishna, Nanda Maharaj, Hare Gopakshoni Pati Mitunam Anye Chavi Buddha. He says this is the nature of prema. 
He says that, that Krishna, Nanda Maharaj, Yashoda, and all the devatas, even Krishna, he says, they, Krishna can't soften my heart. Na na kruram chittam medalyatam isha lavam api. Not even a little bit. Lavam api means just a little bit. Not, it can't soften my hard heart. Not even a tiny bit. He says, but there's one thing. Ahote prema velocity haro yastu balavan. The power, the balavan of that prema that they have for, for Krishna, that prema makes my heart very, very soft. Krishna himself, Hari, he can't soften my heart. And even the, 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 the residents of Vrindavan, headed by Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, even the demigods, they can't soften my heart, just not even a tiny bit, but that prema. That can do this. This is the wonderful nature of Braj Prem, which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes to give. And therefore, Jiva Goswami says, Atta Sarvata Shemanam Saeva Prema Sarvata Spurati. Out of all the auspicious things in this world, Prema is the most auspicious. Hari Prema Sakshadi Vabhavati Bhikim Vabhraja Janas Tayo Ekasmins Chaspurati Sahi Sasvat Spurati Naha Idam Vadam Vadam Vidi Sivasura Si Prabharitaya Sputam Kartam Shaktim Dadati Nataram Yet kiyad api. He's astonished. He says, Hari prema sakshat? Is Krishna directly prema? Ivi bhavati kim va brajajanas? Are the people of braj directly prema? Huh? He says, Tayor ekasran stasputati sahi sasvat spurati na. When that prema appears, either in Krishna or his devotees, then it also appears in me. Huh? And although idam varam varam vidi, vidi means Lord Brahma. Mm -hmm. uh, although vidi, Lord Brahma, and Shiva, and Narad Muni, they all desire to reveal this prem. They don't have the power to do it. Because satu prema charja charya, this prema is most astonishing. Tadiyanam prema yadapikriti charyati gasukas tatap yuchar hitur bhavati hariya sahaya kabido jagat karye vach chuti matapara brahmanitaraham achincho yo bhava sahi navinahi vitarkam visahate he says about this prem the happiness of this prem huh, that the people of Braj have, it's beyond the material senses. Huh? It's the hetu, it's the strong cause for attaining Krishna. And this bhav, known as this mood, known as prema, it's not subject to any mental spectrum speculation, like what we hear about the uh, Parabrahman, when we hear about the Brahman, which is mentioned in the Vedas, was said to be the source of the universe. So this is what Garanga Mahaprabhu is coming to give. And how is he giving this thing? In Vaidagda Vilas by Mano Hardas, he speaks something about this Gora Kirtan. Tabi Kali Juga Gora Bani Jiva Gan Krishna Krishna Boli Premi Kodaye Nartan Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Tabi Kali Juga Gora Gora means something very very frightening huh? Goravani in the forest the very frightening forest of Kali Yuga all the Jiva Gun all the living entities there Krishna, Krishna, Boli, they all began to chant, Krishna, Krishna, Preme Kori Nartan, with great love, and they begin to dance. Hari Harayena Ma, Krishna Ucha Kori Gai, 
Premi mata pare kohe gada gadi jai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare They started singing Hare Hare Nama Krishna Ucha Kori Gai very loudly they were they were singing like this and Premi mata pare with, with great love they were rolling gada gati jai rolling on the ground in pure love so this is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and what he's come to give. Krishna himself, he gave prema to certain living entities. And sometimes the devotees, they say that he gave prema to the living entities, to the trees and the animals of Braj. But we don't feel so happy if we hear that, because rather we accept from other different Vedic literatures that uh, those living entities are eternal associates of the Lord who come down and, and they have their particular bhav. But we don't hear, there's a few living entities in um, Ram Lila. He embraced a, a series of trees. Huh? And in Krishna Lila, there were a few trees that, that he gave some liberation to. When he jumped off, that when he was doing his uh, Kaliyadamana Lila, he jumped off the, this uh, tree into the Jamuna. And that tree, which is still there today, that tree, Vaishnava say, got liberation. But very, very few of those kind of living entities got it. But when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came <laughs> and he went to Jarikhand, Jarikhand is a place I very much want to go. Maybe Jai Gore, when you and Bana come to, to Arisa next time, maybe we can have a road trip. Maybe Anna Pine, if she behaves, she can also come or something. We'll go on a road trip to Jarikhand. In Jarikhand, we can find some of the places. There's footprints of Mahaprabhu in the stone. And there's some different temples and places where he visited. And I'm told there's still some very wonderful forests there. So what did Mahaprabhu do in that Dari Khan forest? It's described in Madhulila chapter 17, Chaitanya Chaitamrita. When Mahaprabhu saw the animals in the forest, he said, Krishna Krishna Kaha Kori Prabhu Jabi Bolila Krishna Kahi Vyagra Miga Nachi Tela Gila Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Kaha Kori, Prabhu Jaina Bali. Mahaprabhu said, chant Krishna, Krishna. And then Krishna Kai Vyagra. Vyagra means the, the, the tigers. And Riga means the deer. Those tigers and deer who usually don't hang out with each other. <laughs> the tigers are open for that. They like to hang out with the deer. But the deer, they, they like to invite them over for dinner. But the deer, they they a little shy about doing that. Huh? The deer, they don't want to associate with the tigers. But they all begin to chant Krishna, Krishna, and they begin to dance. Vyagram riga anyanye kore alingana muke muka diya kore anyanye chumbana. At that time, the tigers and the deer started embracing each other, and they started kissing and putting their mouths together and kissing. And uh, Mayuradi Pakshi, uh, Pakshi means the birds, headed by the Mayur, by, by the peacocks, all these different birds, Pakshigana, all the Pakshigana means the, the, the assembly of Pakshis, of birds, Prabhuri Dekia, they saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Sangachali, they started following him, and Krishna Boli Nachi Matahana, they all started chanting the name of Krishna. I, wouldn't it be such a wonderful thing to hear how the parrots chant Krishna's name. Sometimes if you hear the parrots from Vrindavan, you can hear them chant, Sham, Sham, Sham. <laughs> but I've never heard them chant the name of Krishna. Hari Bol, Boli Prabhu Kori Uchadvani. When Mahaprabhu chanted Hari Bol, Rikshalata Prafulita Sedvani Suni. All the trees and creepers, they became completely ecstatic huh? to hear Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's chanting. Jarikanda Stavara Jangama Achi Jate. Huh? So there in Jarikand, the Stavara and Jangama, the moving the moving entities and the non-moving and living entities, huh? all of them, they became completely mad hearing the holy name of Krishna vibrated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I always had this desire someday to go to Jarikand and go to this forest. So there must be an echo of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's kirtan. And perhaps the truth trees who are the descendants of those original trees from that time perhaps they're still doing that kirtan if we have the ears and perhaps the animals also doing such a thing so this is a kirtan of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu 
this is a nature Mahaprabhu's come to give something much, much higher. Anarpita chidim chidat, karuna avatyanat kalo. He's come to give something much, much higher than this mere liberation. We say in Chaitanya Chaitamrita, it says that mukti tucha falo hoi nama basa hoiti. That nama bas, even nama bas, if you're chanting nama bas, you can get that liberation. That's tucha full. That's an insignificant byproduct of, of chanting even nama bas. So for the devotees, they're not interested in that thing. And we should understand this in a very, very deep way. Being Gaudiya Vaishnavas doesn't just mean that we're a card carrying member of ISKCON. It doesn't just mean that we have Kunti Mala on or that we have Tilak on. It doesn't mean even just that we're chanting the Hare Krishna mantra or even that we've been initiated and we have a spiritual name. We've been initiated by someone in that disciplic succession. But it means we have a certain conception. And this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. And if someone doesn't understand that conception, then they're Pritak Bhav. Pritak Bhav, again, means they're a separatist. They're practicing bhakti in the mode of goodness. And that's a very nice thing. And it becomes confusing sometimes because we don't want to discourage that. We want to encourage that. In fact, we encourage even Vanashram Dharma and Srila Prabhupada stress sometimes that, that, that we want to establish this Vanashram Dharma because so many people, they can't practice bhakti. But at the same time, that's not the purpose of this movement. That's not why Srila Prabhupada came to, what he came to give. Uh, there's four different types of happiness or bliss, which are described by our acharyas. There's Vishayananda. Vishayananda means you're having some bliss because you're watching Netflix movies or, or whatever it is. You're, you're get, you, you, you like going and having a nice milkshake or some ice cream or something. You're, you're enjoying your senses in whatever way. Higher than that is Brahmananda. And that Brahmananda means the, the happiness of Brahman, which is millions and millions of times greater than Vishayananda. Actually, that Vishayananda is a source of the greatest pain and suffering. Huh? But the living entities don't understand that. But millions of times greater than Brahmananda is Premananda. But even greater than Premananda, even greater than the happiness of, of, of love of God, of ecstatic love, is Sevananda, is doing service. Prabhupada spoke about that in one lecture in uh, Bombay on Nectar Devotion in 1972. He says, a Bhakta devotee does not accept Brahman or Brahmananda. He says, this Brahmananda is liberation from a Tirlananda. But unless one is engaged in Sevananda, service of the Lord, this Brahmananda won't be sufficient to keep him in the spiritual world. So this is a wonderful quality of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement that our desire, the desire of the gopis, they want to do service. They're not Pritak Bhav. They're not having something separate. They understand deeply the desire of Guru and of Krishna, and they want to fulfill that. They're not religionists. They're not separatists, I'm saying. Hanuman, he therefore, he prays, is a wonderful verse, which is uh, quoted by Rupa Goswami as Pajavali. Bhava bhanda chide tasyai spriyayami namukta ye bhavan prabhur aham dasa itiyata vilupyate. He says, I don't want this liberation where I'm going to merge into the Brahman of fulgence if I lose the quality of being a servant of the Lord. Because there's so much happiness, so much pleasure in that. Huh? In Nayananda Thakur's uh, Krishna Bhakti Rasa in chapter 3, he speaks about the mood of the devotees. Hena Mukti Sukha Vanchana Kori Bhakta Gan Seva Seva Kabhava Jati Nahi Rana So the devotees they don't want that happiness of liberation where there's no concept of savior, seva, kebab, where there's no conception of the served and the servant. This is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give. And this is such a very, very rare thing. Narpita chidim chidat. It hasn't been given in a very, very long time. There's so many different religionists. And even within our Hare Krishna movement, many devotees, many initiated devotees, they think that the purpose is to get liberation 
or to become free from material desires. And those are bhakti in a mode of goodness, but they're sagun bhakti. They're, they're not, they're bhakti in the modes of material nature, and they're not what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. So Nayananda Thakur goes on to explain. Mukti hoile seva sukha napaye tahate seva sukha bhakti follow satata bhakate that on this platform of liberation, huh? there's no mukti holy seva suk napai. There's no seva suk. There's no happiness of service. But the devotees seva suk to bhakti follow satate bhakati. They constantly enjoy this happiness, the seva suk, this happiness of service. So the devotees, they're not interested even in the happiness. Of, of Premananda, they just want to serve the Lord. And we hear in uh, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami gives some examples that uh, on one occasion, uh, Krishna's chariot driver, he was fanning, Daruka, he's fanning Krishna with a fan. And while he's fanning him, he started becoming ecstatic and tears are coming from his eyes and his body was shaking. That condition, which all of us hanker for and, and desire sometimes is the goal of our life. But when that happened to Daruka, he started cursing it. And he said, this is really not good because it, it's disturbing my service. So for the devotees, we want that Seva Nanda. That's, this is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give. This is the, uh, the mood of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. This is something which hadn't been given in such a long, long time. So many of the different religionists are coming. So many different people speaking about things, how we can get liberation, how we can get something which we want through religion. But they're not teaching about the Seva Nanda. And again, in, in uh, Adi Lila Chaitanya Chaitanya there's another example that Radharani, once she was crying in ecstasy, and she became very, very upset. What are these tears? This is disturbing me because I can't see Krishna. Her seeing Krishna, we should understand also, is one of the services that Radharani does. How can we understand that? It's, because generally when we think of, of seeing the Lord, we think, wow, that's, that's for my pleasure. But in the same way uh, that a young girl, she wants a boy to look at her. And when the boy looks at her, she gets some happiness. Huh? It's a perverted reflection. In the same way that, that a boy is wanting a girl to look at him. And when, he, when she looks at him, then he feels some happiness happiness. So Srimati Radharani, she understands that this glance, this is for Krishna's pleasure. And she's giving like that. So, so many, many things. Um, I want to go ahead and stop here and uh, see if any of the devotees have any reflections. And I'll go ahead and read through some of the different comments. Well, here, here in uh, Puri, we have our Dhammadarasakam and, and uh, deep done our lamp giving in a, in a little while, so I want to stop. So Bhajabhani just mentions about food in the mode of goodness should be healthy. Yes, that's a fact. It means that no sugar, no white flour, no <laughs> no wheat. That's that's a fact. It should be in the mode of goodness. But we want to hear something much beyond the mode of goodness. Uh, although sometimes for our bodies we need some mode of goodness, and also it, preaching about the mode of goodness is a very powerful thing. A lot of but they can understand the mode of goodness. Ujula Resiga comments, she says, it's a very subtle and very essential topic. I appreciated the series of this discussion on Lloyd Kapilides' teachings on Facebook. Uh, and the IYF talks also had some of this essential stuff very helpful. Natalia comments, I thought it possible to separate Prem. It is impossible to separate Prem from the residents of Goloka Vrindavan. It's impossible because they're, they're made out of Prem. But at the same time, I, Jiva Goswami is speaking kind of a, a theoretical way that, that even if he could separate, you know, this thing from them. Hmm? Um, where is Jiva Goswami saying that? He's speaking about that in his uh, Gopal Champu. Hmm? And I also read a little bit from Priti Sundarbha about, but the Priti Sundarbha discussion was about liberation and praying. And Rajabhani took comments, those verses reminded me 
this is from the Gobi Gate where the rivers and trees are stunned from seeing Krishna. Yeah, I was also thinking like that too. And in fact, how Srimati Radharani is doing a service for Krishna, of seeing him. And on and one level, there's two different levels of gopis we're speaking about in the Gopi Geet. And one level of gopis, they're saying, we want to see you. But the other level of gopis, the followers of Radharani, is saying that you want us to see you. <laughs> we understand that because that, that's your good fortune if we see you. Because you'll get some pleasure from that. There's a blessed of that. They know. They're so deep. They're so immersed. There's no pre talk about not even a, a slight fragrance of that with the gopis. They understand completely what is Krishna's desire. And Brother Jibani comments, it proves that bhakti is the nature of each soul. Jai. Jai Gaur Prabhu says, bhakti, bhakti, and bhagavan are not of this material world. Thank you for remembering that from myself and comments. That. So there's a few personal. Uh, okay, um, how about Brenda Sundari? She just disappeared. Oh, she's still there. Do you have any reflections you want to share? I know you have uh, to yes, run yeah. if you have class in there. Yeah, I really like the this um this point about liberation that even though there's well that ultimately it's it's sort of distasteful actually and it's worse than just being blatantly uh having uh desires for sense gratification because you know I was thinking it's like that you gave this example of like the the boy is finding things out about the lady so that he can please her, but not to please her truly, but to please him. And I think I experience that sometimes with, with people in authority positions or positions of where they have prestige. <laughs> and, and even I experience sometimes that when people will even do that with me. And um, it's so distasteful because it feels so, the, the fakeness of it is like is very painful and um i almost wish it wouldn't happen at all and it would just be you know blatantly <laughs> honest how they really feel <laughs> yeah. for those of you who are not from america like a few of us are we call that stalking in america and it's somebody that they, they follow around some movie star or their old wife or whatever and they're looking through the windows they, they follow her car and they go everywhere she and they're following her on facebook and this and that and that's creepy we don't like that so sometimes people their uh friendship or their bhakti toward us is kind of like stalking it's creepy and, and they may be trying to find out what you like and when is your birthday and, and happy birthday to you and they say they and whatever. But their whole purpose doing it is, is creepy, is because they want to control you. It's a good point. Rajabani often makes this point that, that uh, manager, they try to control people in that way because psychologically we've learned. And there's some people, they allow themselves to be controlled in that way also because they're flattered by it. That's also an interesting point. Yeah. And, and sometimes. Do you have anything further uh, on that? Well, I've heard devotees say, like, oh, um, how can I serve you? How can I serve you? You have been um, put on hold. And the mood is a bit like, I want to serve you so that you like me. I want to serve you so that you'll give, give, me, give me your favor, um, but in a sort of a exploitative way. Yeah, I, I see that amongst the managers. You know, sometimes I see that in myself, that, that I'm trying to be friends with someone because I think that if I make people like me, then that's bhakti. <laughs> but that's not bhakti. <laughs> Maybe making people not like you might be bhakti, actually. I, I was just reading about uh, one of Prabhupada's god brothers and how he visited someone's home with another sannyasi and the residents at home, they were, they were Indian devotees, and they said, Maharaj, the Mahabharat's coming on television. Please sit down and watch it with us. And he said, no, I don't watch television. And he said, no, no, Maharaj, it's okay. They said that this is the Mahabharat. And he said, no, I'm not going to watch that. It's, is it devotees who are putting it on? What is their conception? He said, it's like milk touched by the lips of a serpent. And I was a little struck by that. My grandmas like watching some of those. <laughs> My birthday. But I was struck by, by how strongly he spoke. And he, he just refused. They kept pleading with him, please come, just watch a little bit, thinking if he watches a little bit, he's going to get caught up into it. But he refused. And when I was reading to it, I was thinking, gosh, this is a little bit, intense this is a little bit harsh a lot of people would really find this harsh 
And then he commented that he said it really touched the hearts of those devotees. So it's not just that, that uh, we, we try to be friends with people and being friends with them, being lovey-dovey, which is in a mode of goodness. Not, that's not necessarily bhakti, especially if we're doing it, trying to, to, to get something out of that person. And we have to be careful about that. We should be straightforward in, in our bhakti, according to our situation. You have any other thoughts, Vinda Sundari? I uh, know that was it. I, I was thinking how Krishna must feel if, if people are c- approaching him to get something in the in the in the pretext of of love, how it must feel for him. Yeah, and and how nice it is to just be with like the 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 cowherd boys who aren't really like that. It's like they'll make fun of him. Like that's where he gets his pleasure. <laughs> I, I was observing something that probably all of us have observed online that, that there's such a division now within our movement over this COVID thing and the vaccination thing and devotees are being really terrible with each other. Some of them, if you're anti-vax, you and I were having this discussion a day or two ago. If you're anti-vax, some devotees put you down. If you're pro-vaccination, some devotees put you down. What's the problem? And some devotees will, of course, some devotees are going to be pro-vax, and of course, some devotees will be anti-vax, and it might be an expression of devotion <laughs> on behalf of both of them. <laughs> I, we, we should love devotees because the devotees and not demand that everybody think the way that I do, which is bhakti in, in the mode of ignorance or, or passion at the best. Thank you. Let, let me go ahead with some of the comments here. Ujjala Resiga, I, I think you have to uh, go pretty soon, too. Do you have any uh, thing you want to share with us? Pranams to you. Hare yes, yes, yeah. Nice Pranams to see to that you, famous Prabhuji. brick wall. I think you should you should write your initials or something on the wall there. I should write here Pari Prashnaina. That's <laughs> what I, I should write here. So that the Pari Prashna wall is the Ujjala Rasiga wall. <laughs> Pranams to you, Prabhuji, and to all the devotees here. I'm, I'm just so much appreciating this Katha Prabhu. Every week I look forward to it because uh, this is not just a regular talk on Bhakti or Katha. And uh, it's very essential for somebody uh, to practice, you know, real Bhakti. First of all, to know what real Bhakti means (laughs) and the subtleties of that. Otherwise, it is so easy to get trapped in the passion and definitely in the goodness, <laughs> thinking that that's the topmost um, way of serving. Mm-hmm. But uh, the deeper subtleties of what actually real bhakti means, this is not easily found outside Prabhuji. Not in terms of words and not in terms of practice either. I mean, I guess I have those eyes that I'm just looking only the superficial bhakti outside. But I really cherish and value this Sangha because I would not know otherwise what real bhakti means to practice in first place. So that's, that's why very helpful, Prabhuji. And uh, it is so interesting to hear the conversation, how in the name of service, we try to control or get favor from the uh, devotees. And in the same name of service, somebody else tries to control us also. Each one of us thinking that it is bhakti that we are practicing. So these are unseen traps. And if if these are not known and brought to our attention, we don't know how many years and how many lives would pass by. Thinking, you know, that we are practicing bhakti, but no way close to it. No way close to that at all. You beautifully said that real bhakti does not start until we do the surrender. So if the bhakti is not starting there, what are we doing in between all these lifetimes, getting trapped in between? So this makes, <laughs> this makes us think, get deeper, pause, and try to practice what we are hearing, Prabhuji. Very grateful, very grateful to you, Prabhuji, for this kata. Very substantial. So to look on a mundane side of it in a way that that we can maybe understand or express this for some new devotees or non-devotees, there's subtle 
personal relationships. And some people, they get married, and their marriage may be in the mode of goodness. It means that the husband takes care of the wife. He gives enough money, and he's polite to her. He doesn't abuse her. He's nice, and maybe he listens to her and whatever, and the wife behaves in a similar way. But at the same time, we see in, in those relationships, there's no satisfaction, and they break apart because they need to be ahoitiki apratiyata. They need to be without any motivation. And only something that has no motivation is something transcendental, and that means it's done for the pleasure of the Lord. And even in those relationships, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta says, even in our marital relationships or friendships, if we're doing them based on Krishna, on Krishna Bhakti, what we're hearing and chanting together with our family, with our husband, our wife, then also we can come, we can become very subtle in our connection with our, with our devotee friends, with our Guru Dev, with our husband or our wife. And then those relationships can be very satisfying. I personally, you, you've probably all heard me speak about that quite a bit. I, it's something I like to, to mention to devotees because so often I hear devotees just slamming material relationships as just being Maya and nonsense. Recently, I, I was doing some search on line, online and I, I was searching for some quotes from Prabhupada about marriage and chastity of women. And I found a collection of really nice quotes by some Prabhupada disciples, a prominent preacher. And then as I went down, I saw you had a whole bunch of other comments from different famous people, I don't know, like Benjamin Franklin and whatever. And all those comments were, were horrific. They were just making fun of women like anything. And, and women are terrible and relationships with women are terrible. And it really disturbed me because that's not, that's not our shasha. It's not what our, our charyas say. And when we're preaching to new people, if we go and just <laughs> try to say that all relationships are bad and the relationship with your wife or husband is bad, some people, if they're foolish, they'll just give up their husband or their wife in the name of practicing bhakti. But then what will end up happening usually is they end up leaving bhakti because they're not satisfied and they'll go back and try to find another husband or wife. Rather, we should try to reform our relationships and keep Krishna in the center. But that's a very, very subtle thing. It, to really keep Krishna in the center. And most of us are, even it, it, we may say that, yes, I'm doing this, and my wife and I, we're going to the temple, we're shaving our little boy's head. I see a lot of kids, a lot of parents, that might, it's weird. They shave that poor little boy's head, <laughs> you know, once a week or something. They stick a dhoti on him, you know. It's like, it just seems so strange to me, trying to dress him up like a little doll, like they want him to be. And they, they feel like we're practicing bhakti. It's in the mode of goodness. It's nice. No hair is in the mode of goodness, <laughs> I guess. Wearing a dhoti is in the mode of goodness, I guess. Going and bringing your kid, getting him up early in the morning and forcing him to go to <laughs> Mongol Arctic and take a bath. That's, I guess, in the mode of goodness. But it, it, it's saguna bhakti. Although it looks like bhakti, and we, we think, as you're saying, it's bhakti. It's not, because we're not doing it for the pleasure of the Lord. And therefore, we in one of our sessions somewhere... I forget where it was. I think it was in the morning session. We were reading some quotes from Prabhupada about Gurukula. And he said, what is this making them march? What is this forcing them to chant japa? And we think that that's bhakti. But that at best is bhakti in the mode of goodness. It's not real bhakti because you're not doing it for the pleasure of the Lord. You're not evoking mm. the, the, the uh, voluntary practice of that bhakti by those children. It, it's, it's, it's terrible. Okay, thank you very Prabhu, much. Prabhu, I last comment. My okay. children, my husband, they, I'm sure they would want me to hear this kata more and more, so I can become a better person, a better family member. So, thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> Not Krishna. in the name of devotion that I. Anyway, thank you so much, Prabhu. Hari Krishna, thank you very much, Ujjwal Rasika. So, Maya Porchandra, Prabhu, I, I noticed you, you wrote some comments. I can read those out, but it'd be even far better if we could see your smiling face. Huh? You're hiding behind Brenda Revel, I see, I think. Uh, do you have any? In, there he is. Wow. Can, would you like to uh, make some comments? Or should I read out your comments? Or you want to read out your comments? So, Prabhu, thank you so much. Whenever I can, um, I can join this Sangha. That feel is so nice. So I join after um, like 10, 15 minutes. I heard like two things. You said some Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they believe there won't be any more Kalki Avata. I mean, what what is the authentic belief on that? 
that's not the mainstream belief, right? Well, mainstream belief means what? Mainstream mean beliefs means what ISKCON devotees say, I guess. Yeah, most ISKCON devotees don't believe that. But amongst Gaudiya Mutt devotees, it's pretty prominent. Amongst a lot of Babaji devotees, it's prominent. And some ISKCON devotees also have that understanding by different sadhus they've heard from. I, I'm not trying to, to present one is right and one is wrong. I, I really don't like that. The point is that the different Vaishnavas can think different ways. And that's fine. And we should all just love each other. I mean, really, does it matter to us if Kalki appears or not <laughs> in this age? It's really not a very, I hope I'm not around <laughs> to see that thing. I hope I get Krishna praying before that. And it's just one of these ridiculous things that devotees try to argue over and to establish that they know the best thing or their guru is the best or whatever. Okay. Thank you. And the other thing is that we hear all the time, Lord Chaitanya came to distribute the love of Godhead. But now we can say he came to distribute the seva. Right? He came to distribute his own seva, which is even superior to, to the bliss you know, of love. Yeah, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give not just bhakti, but prema bhakti. And Prabhupada translates bhakti as devotional service, which is a very radical kind of way to translate bhakti. Bhakti just means devotion. Bhakti means an emotion, some feelings for someone. But Prabhupada translates it to, to mean devotional service. So there's some devotion, there's feelings there, but it means service, intrinsic in that. And for me, that that's such a beautiful thing about Mahaprabhu's movement when I hear about what is pseudo bhakti, what is pure bhakti, it may become very discouraging. It seems like it's just something which is not just you know a million miles away, but like a million universes away, <laughs> or something. It's just so far, far away from where I am. But at the same time, I can do some service. Right now, I can serve Prabhupada. I can serve his mission. I can serve my Guru Dave, and and they're pleased if I render service to the Vaishnavas. If I, if I do that service, that gives me some hope. And I, I'm directly, as Prabhupada writes in Madhili, the chapter 8, in Chaitanya Chaitanya, in one purport, he says that someone who's completely surrendered, which is another big topic, but someone who's completely surrendered and is absorbed in serving the mission, the preaching mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they're in Nitya Lila right now. And they're in Nitya Parishad. They're already an eternal associate, even right now. So I, I, I would take that to mean that someone like Jayananda Prabhu, who is completely absorbed in serving Prabhupada's mission, he's already in the spiritual world. Or some, some of the great devotees in our society who may not have been born in the greatest families, may not have had the best history before they were devotees, but if they're completely absorbed in that, they're already an eternal associate right now. And these other higher things that we speak about, these things are coming, and we should have faith in it. Do you have any further thoughts, my Pochandra Prabhu? Thank you, Thank you. Your, rest, your restaurant's going okay? Yes. I, I was thinking yes. to come and go, go there for lunch tomorrow, but I don't think I can get a plane ticket. I'm sorry. But I, I, we remember you sometimes. Thank you. Want to you later, so. You already plan to come here. I, I don't know. I, they have a saying in Arisa, Bhagavan Anka Icha, whatever God desires. So I, I don't know. Right now, everything's really complicated. And right now, I'm thinking about a garden. I'm actually planning some things. And if I run away right now, they're all going to die. So that's important for us. But I, I would I would hope to. And you guys should come and visit here. We went and visited yeah. you. You should come to India sometime and, and come to Jagannath no. Puri and visit us. End of, end of January. So you take Yatra every year in January. Is it happening yeah. this year or no? I, it, I'm not sure. We, we, we can't get our usual venue, which is that uh, Ishopanti Ashram. But uh, you came one year for that, didn't you? Yeah, I remember I mean, that. Yeah. In, you, you were there for I one did. day or something. Yeah. Uh, usually we have that venue, but this year we can't because the, the, the uh, Catholic Church is not allowing any Western, any foreign people to, to stay there because of the COVID thing. So we're trying to see about maybe having a different venue for it. We also have a Yatra with about 50 devotees, Russian speaking devotees. If any of our Russian friends, if Natalia wants to take part or, or uh, Vajibanita or someone, or maybe even on a piney, uh, in February, 
we'll have we'll be taking the devotees around here in Puri and then around in Mayapur. And we would be in ecstasy if you want to take part in that. And that yatra will be just myself. I'll be doing a lot of katas. We may have one or two devotees with us doing some kirtan and other kata, but mostly I'll be the speaker for that. And that, be that be... In Sorry? Do we have the date? Uh, let me look here real quick. I just know that it's in February. It's around Nichananda Trayodasi. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Um, oh, Krishna. I think we haven't finalized the dates yet. Yeah, we have. Well, we were talking about it being... I think in late January, wasn't it Krishna Khan? Late no, no, the, the first two weeks of February. That's what she's saying. It's, it's between uh, February 1st and the 14th. But, but it's not finalized yet. So if anybody's interested in that, I suggest you write to myself or Krishna Khan. And who's organizing the Russian Yatra? That's uh, um, who's organizing? Who? Malika Mala. She's doing that. Savya Sachi Prabhu is one of the personalities involved in that. So, yeah, Brenda Sundar, you should come also. It's a big thing, you know, Brenda Sundar, if you want to come and you want to bring your, your husband comes and your kids come. I have a devotee friend, I won't say any names, but he brings six kids to India from America. And he has to pay for a plane ticket for himself, for his wife, and six tickets, full tickets for all of his children. You could make a down payment on a house <laughs> for your, your round trip tickets <laughs> for a family. For that, it's like it's a really intense thing. <laughs> not, not an easy thing to come. Okay, thank you, Maya Prachandra Prabhu. So happy to see you again today, Prabhuji. Thank you. Uh, so, what about uh, is Anupani Radha still here? I know you have to run away. She's like. Uh, thank you so much for this one. And thank you for the devotees' reflections. It's so amazing to hear this uh, process in the heart and in the mind. And uh, yeah, my reflection is that I'm really was thinking about the thing which Mahaprabhu brought for us this conjugal mellow and uh, like, and also I was thinking about the place where I am right now. And as you mentioned, and you were speaking about the desire for the liber liberation, uh, it made me think that uh, the only only opportunity to get rid of this desire is to get taste uh, in taking shelter of devotees and taking shelter of uh, holy name. Like it's 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 the only chance, and only after that we can speak about something bigger. Just just a thought. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes we have some real serious misconception about these subtle topics. And that's why it's so very, very important that we have Krishna Kata. I was just reading an article from Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Uh, we were speaking about how Kirtan is so nice, but we have to have Krishna Kata. Otherwise, we can't have a conception for it. So that's really good. So we're, we're all hoping we should all say a prayer for Anapani Radha that she can get her visa and she can come to India soon so she can serve her Guru Maharaj because otherwise there's going to be floods in Russia from her tears. And she's crying because she, she can't do her service. <laughs> there's a... <laughs> Thank you, Anupayana. It's nice to see you today, Hare Krishna. And Leela Purushottam Prabhu just made a comment, um, which I really like. I hadn't really thought about it before. He says, we should have a Pari Prashna retreat. I would love to have a retreat in, in Puri, maybe Vrindavan, Mayapur, and spend a week or two with all the devotees here. That would just be completely awesome. I'm not a big organizer. Um, maybe we can get Brenda Sundar and her husband, they're good organizers in connection with Krishna Kuhn. And Mayapur Chandra, he's a good organizer. Someone else could do some of that. Because if I organize things, it's going to be terrible. Krishna Kuhn can do, but she's a little bit of an invalid now. Okay, so let me go on. Uh, We've got our, our kirtan coming up here in a few minutes. Uh, Gorni Thai Prabhu, do you want to share something? I, I, you wrote something. You can go ahead and read that, or I can read that if you want. The soul is made from such an under prem. Yeah, but it's a philosophy. But I would like to comment that I, I really appreciate your focus on the key elements. Like we do service for Guru Goranga's pleasure, we have to have a goal. We have to cut about the goal. 
not just the problems, uh, misunderstandings, but the goal, the goal, the goal, and the help, the mood, the motivation. I, I really appreciate you are so focused on that few points. That that helps me a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. What's the name of the devotee in in New Mayapur? Uh, uh, I, I got a. Uh, uh, Arishanasana Prabhu. Isn't that his, his building right behind you? I, it, it looks like the no, guest room where I stayed. I'm in Hungary. I'm in Hungary. Hungary. Oh, it looks yeah. like his guest room where I stayed sometimes in New Mayan. <laughs> yeah, where yeah. are you at in Hungary? In New Brajadam? Yeah, in New Brajadam, but I, I'm moving to in, a, in a rented place. So I'm, I'm trying to establish my life, you know, outside of the village. Uh huh. Nice. I have a small place and I'm working on that. And that's that's my my host house. Uh -huh. Nice maybe house. We'll, maybe we'll come and visit you. There's... Yeah, sure. I'm making it to, to have, about have quite often. Yeah, yeah. I'm making it to have a space for, for devotees who are coming because I'm always so painful not to receive devotees. So I'm making this place for that also. Hungary is a place, it's not an option for us. We have to go there every year because my, my wife's family. <laughs> it's not an option, we have to do that. Okay, thank you, Prabhuji. Um, Lila Purushottam Prabhu, do you have any reflections you want to share? Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah, well, I was, uh, I, I wanted to thank first uh, Brinda Sundari for her first comment that, that I, I really, that was exactly what I was thinking when, when you were speaking about it, that it sounds even more terrible <laughs> or exploitive, actually, if you, if you uh, look for the things that a person like to attract his attention, but with the exploitive motives. So uh, that, that really spoke out of my heart, actually. And I, I was nicely reminded about this last year series of Kapila, Kapila's teachings. I really liked that last year. And in that sense, I had already then, I remember I had the thought, I would like to confirm it with you, that uh, this Pritak Drisha element, which is described there, is it, uh, can it be viewed as, uh, uh, how to put it, like, when, when we speak about the dualistic vision of the, of the materialities, ma materialists, like Bhayam Dvitiya, Abhinivesh. So if an aspirant for a devotion brings that dualistic vision with him to a practice of the devotional service, can it be seen as that, that a symptom of it is the Pritak Drisha, that he separates the the, the, the practices of the devotional service from their real goal to, to please the Lord, the Samsidhi Haritoshanam. That, that, that's, I was thinking about it like that, and I would like to uh, yeah, ask I, you whether, whether it's that correct or. I like that. I, 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 it's a little subtle, I think, what you put, what you said. Let me express it in another way, maybe that sometimes we think that bhakti means. Uh, that I'm, I'm going to the temple, I'm worshiping Tulsi, I'm chanting Japa, and this and that. And, but we, we, that may be sadguna bhakti, it may be bhakti in the, in the modes of nature, because this is pritak bhav. We're, we're, we're thinking that, yeah, I'm doing bhakti, and I'm focusing on those activities, but I'm not thinking about doing them for the pleasure of the Lord. Yeah, very much. Yeah. That, that's a beautiful comment. And that's why it's so frustrating sometimes that we don't feel that satisfaction, even when we go to the morning program, uh, Bhaja was making some comments about this recently. It's very, very frustrating. I, so many of us experience, I think you go to the morning program, and, my God, I'm in the morning program and I feel sad. But one thing I, I, I'd like to also mention though too, is that this discussion about bhakti and the modes of nature, we can also be part of that. We can be, be un under that in the mode of goodness where we're analyzing people. We're saying, yes, the reason why this manager He's trying to be friends with me is because of this and this and because he wants to control me and whatever. And that's bhakti at best in the mode of goodness. I, I would suggest that we shouldn't be focusing on that. Let, let's, sometimes devotees also think 
they mistake that for being Bach. Yeah. That I, I'm going to be able to analyze everybody and see where they're at and things. But bhakti means that we're chanting the holy names, we're absorbed in that, we're absorbed in Krishna. And we're not, we're not absorbed, we're not worried about what, what people's motivation is when they're dealing with us. We're not worried about people's motivation in the morning program. We're just in bliss and we're going to the morning program because it pleases our Gurudev. And we can be absorbed, as we were commenting recently, living alone in the crowd. It, it's an absolute requirement for all devotees and it's something that Krishna gives to us and we think we sometimes we think that bhakti means analyzing everybody and being sophisticated that that oh I'm, I'm not going to go to the program I'm not going to serve with these people because I see their motivation is not pure and it's a fact their motivation is not pure and your analysis may be in the mode of goodness it's, it's it may be by shastra and that but it's not suda bhakti it's still in the in the modes of nature. You're you're just you're not seeing Sudha Bhakti. You're not practicing Sudha Bhakti. You're you're swimming in the modes of material nature and thinking that's Bhakti, and it's not. <laughs> you have any further reflection on that? Oh, just to add <laughs> to to your uh, now this last comment. Sometimes what I what I can observe around myself is that the more faults I can identify it, I identify around myself, the better devotee I am. Uh, that, that's the mentality behind <laughs> it. You know, like, like, like and, and, but we, we don't have to. <laughs> it's not a pleasant topic, so. <laughs> yeah. But thank okay. you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, that you confirmed because I, was th I remember I was thinking that, that thought even last year when you were giving that kata on Kapila Dev. So, so I was thinking about this connecting of, of the dualistic vision with bringing it into devotional service that it reflects as, as the Pritak Drisha. So. We, we should have Shastra Chakshish. We should have the eyes of Shastra. And we shouldn't be fools. We, we can see why someone is trying to suck up to me, why a manager is trying to be nice to me or something. And we're not thrilled by it. And we may keep a distance from it. But we should be so absorbed in bhakti and taking shelter of bhakti when we see problems in the society. And there's so many problems. We should just have firm faith that by practicing this bhakti, and, and it doesn't look like a big thing. I'm not being a manager. I'm not chastising people. I'm not exposing people. A mundane person thinks that's how you, you change things. But we should have so much faith in bhakti that this will change everything. And if I just take shelter in bhakti, I, I'm just absorbed in Krishna and the whole, holy name, my, my Takwaji Seva, my service to Gurudev, that that'll change the hearts of other people. And I don't have to to uh, uh, play with them. I don't have to go where they're at with their conceptions and argue with them and, and smash them and change their mind. I'm not going to be able to change their mind so much of the time. And we see that so many discussions I, I've seen on, on Facebook and YouTube and emails and people quarreling with each other and devotees and they, they feel so strong about it, but it's just a waste of time. I, and I, I just have no, no interest in it. And, and I, I see so many devotees, they, they have different ideas. That's okay. Let's respect their different ideas, but let me just take shelter of bhakti. And, I, and I'm, if I do that, everything will be okay. That's Sarva Thank Karma Kripa Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, for Thank nice you so see, much. <laughs> nice to see the outside there. Everybody, it's cold where everybody's at here. It's, it's really it's really hot during the day. Thank you. Not here. <laughs> here the comment. Yeah. We're not, we're on a pine. Is that I think not where Jai Gore is at. Bhakti Rita, I see everybody's dressed warmly. My Chandra probably also. We'll do the rest of your comments further. Real bhakti doesn't flow out unless one is willing to go with its supreme graceful flow, giving the controllership back to the real controller. This is made possible only by Guru Garanga through Hari Bhajan. Is that right, Prabhuji? Yeah. So we, 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 if we're doing kirtan, thinking, yeah, okay, now I, I, I'm, I'm singing in this note, and now I'm going to change the, the melody. Now I'm going to increase the tempo of the kirtan. If we think that we're controlling the kirtan, we're not, we're not Krishna conscious, but really being in the kirtan, really writing something in Krishna conscious, really speaking in Krishna conscious, or cooking in Krishna conscious means that we're just so absorbed in serving the Lord. We're dressing the deity 
and when I dress Giriraj, I get in front, I think, Giriraj, what would you like today? <laughs> and we try to think of, about their pleasure. And if we get really absorbed in that, it just takes us away. Huh? Okay, Krishna Kuhn has a comment, right? Answer. Okay, Brenda Sundry has something else in me to read it. All the biggest conflicts with devotees we've dealt with uh, are those who have had strong underlying motivations or the pretext of serving. So something I've been reflecting on, how detrimental to ourselves and others it is when we don't actively purify our motivations. And uh, Brajabani wants to say something too. Okay, just let me reflect a little bit on Brenda Sundry's comment here too, that, that we have to, we, it's so important that we can tolerate devotees, that we can see that these are these devotees who are coming, these persons are the fruit of Srila Prabhupada. They're the fruit of, of, of Gurudev. They're the fruit of some Vaishnava. And those Vaishnavas, they, they feel so much love for those new people who are coming. So maybe they're all screwed up and they have problems and whatever, but we just tolerate it. Huh? We, we can't expect all of them to march in unison, just like bread your bonnet until you have your cats. You can't expect that your cats are all going to march together. and They're going to recite shlokas together or something like that. It would be a little ridiculous if you tried to do that. Rather, you just have to tolerate them. And that toleration is a symptom of love. So, is it good for bread your bonnet to go next? you want to say something, Krishna Kron? You exploding? I, I just let, let, me, let me give the mic to Krishna Kron and then bread your bonnet after you. Just because it goes with Lila Purushottam Prabhu's comment. Just yesterday, I just yesterday I uh, read again this quote from Shabbat. It's not a so attack with that Lila Purushottam Prabhu's comment reminded me of, and it's a simple quote that you all know. But I'm just going to repeat it anyway because I I think it's very meaningful for myself. When faults in others misguide and delude you, have patience, introspect. Find faults in yourself and know that others cannot harm you unless you harm yourself. That, that has to be patient in the WhatsApp group, okay? Okay, I'll do it in a minute. And um, the other thing, of course, I have to say that I was also very much uh, affected by this uh, most disgusting way of dealing with Krishna when we are using bhakti, apparent bhakti, um, to try to get a, a, try to get something out of Krishna in, instead of pleasing him. And I marked how you were talking about Prahlad Maharaj and this um, verse about Yadidasa Simeka Manvaram Stambhadashiva verse. It's a very important verse for me and I marked what you said. I really liked it that he doesn't want to get rid of his material desires to avoid suffering or to achieve something or for himself to become purified. He wants to get freedom from material desires because that will please Krishna. And it reminded me of a comment that, and so that he can serve Krishna better, yes. It reminded me of a comment from Nyanja Maharaj that I really appreciated. And um, I, I'm going to just repeat that. that we want to go to Vindavan, not because we want to go to a particular place, because Vindavan is the highest place and like that. That's not the reason we want to go to Vindavan. That's not the reason we want to receive Shima Mahaprabhu's gift. The reason we want to go to Vindavan is simply because this spontaneous love uh, is what really pleases Krishna. And other ways, other places, we can't really please Krishna. This is our reason for wanting Mahaprabhu's gift. It's not because we're going to be the highest if we get Mahaprabhu's highest <laughs> gift, or we're going to be the best, or we want the best. Right, Krishna? What a great comment. Yeah, it's not that we, we, we we're taking Mahaprabhu because I want to be better than the Sri Vaishnavas. I want to be better than the Madhva Vaishnavas. Right. I'm, we're the best. I'm on the best team. It's not like that. That's a great comment. Uh, Bridjabani, tell you there. You want to comment something? Can we see you? You're not driving the car, are you? You're muted. I'm, I'm in the I'm a, yeah I'm in the car, but I'm not driving. But I, but I would like to say a few words, more yeah, comments yeah. on the comments. Um, first of all, that you say that I'm going, for example, I'm going to the 
to the uh, temple because my Guru Maharaj want me to go to the temple. First of all, thanks God, <laughs> Guru Maharaj never told me that he want me to go to the temple. First of all, secondary, secondary, if I myself decided to go to the temple, why should I go to the place or not to the temple? It can be kind of society or Namahata, whatever. Why should I go to the company or to the community where I feel bad? It's not because I'm trying to understand the motivation. I don't care of, about motivation, you know, just because in this particular yatra or this particular group of people, I feel bad. Why should I go there? How this my bad feeling can satisfy my Guru Maharaj? This is the first thing. The second thing also, you know, we are very good in kind of cliches talking, like, you know, like uh, bhakti is that and that. It's the, for, for, for 90% it's kind of percent, percent, it's kind of cliches and very little life in all these words. You know, sometimes I prefer maybe some very simple person who know nothing of cliches, but have really inner feelings about, uh, about to God or even new Bhakta or different old Bhakta who try to avoid cliches and know I feel some experience behind it, but so all these things, you know, it's, it's very, it's not, you know, like, oh, for example, I'm going to the temple and I feel like the, the society or the community, you know, expecting from me for something. And I, you know, we are not, I'm not from the wood. I'm not from, I'm not stone. Each of one, each of, each us of one has feeling about, you know, the, the, the dynamic of energy that's going on in community, you feel it and you feel that some people look at you that you are different and say, you know, well, you feel it, you can feel it. So why should I go there? I will not go there. I don't want to go there because they, even not by words, but by their, um, how to say, intention, intent upon me, I feel, I feel this, uh, you know, and I'm not the person of cliches, you know that. I will never I will never stay in the place of cliches. It's boring me. It's 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 a, it's a, a divide of life. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. That that's a manifestation of your bhakti. And you follow that, you follow your Guru Marsh. But I, I, I have to comment, Brajibani, to you be careful. Because we, when we go to the temple, when I go to the temple, I can also associate with Srila Prabhupada. He's there. The deities are also there. And there may be some sadhu there. And another thing may be there. There might just be one simple person who may be feeling like you and I sometimes when we go to the temple and, and, and the devotees are, are so mechanical and, and so trying to control us and things. But maybe there's one innocent devotee there who I can help them. And I can help Srila Prabhupada's mission in that way. And that's why for myself, I, I take this example, which I often give of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Puri, where he supports organized religion, the Jagannath Mandir, and everything's completely screwed up there. They don't allow great devotees like Haridas Thakur and Rupa Goswami inside the temple. And they're very, very ritualistic, and they just want money and so many things. They're, they're super controlling. All the bad qualities that we see sometimes in our managers, they're there in the temple. But Mahaprabhu was going there three times a day, not because of those nonsense people. He, he's completely oblivious to them. He doesn't even see them, but he's seeing Krishna. And he, he, at the same time, he's helping innocent people who are there. And simultaneously, he's spending his time in an intimate way with other devotees. Because the problem is we need to have some Sangha. If we don't find some Sangha with devotees, then the danger is we might start thinking that the non-devotees are better association than the devotees. And if we start thinking that's, that's a very dangerous thing. Even that a non-devotee may be an honest person. A non-devotee may be an educated person. They may not be controlling or whatever, 
But in the language of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, always and necessarily, the devotees are better, even the, the most rough, nonsense devotee, because they're chanting. But but it's also as you know as Srila Prabhupada once answered to Yamuna Devi, the two people it's already sangha, two people it's already sangha. It might not be two hundred, right. if it's too few or you know uh, uh, NSA, or, see, um, how to, um, no, very you know simple or uh, sensory people sen sen sincere people, it's already sangha. It doesn't yes. have to be 200. Yes. And that's that's one of the that's why we're doing this program, because I, I'm trying to help create a Sangha with all of you. And I'm also trying to speak to all of you about the importance of Sangha. And I'm, I'm really hoping that all of you, wherever you live in Israel, in America, or wherever, that you're, you're creating Sangha like that, because we all need Sangha and, and just online Sangha is not enough either. We need some physical association. And so, like you said, even if it's just one other person, if they're if they're a good-hearted person, Prabhupada said that. We're, he told Jamuna to I I, I know. That's Iskan. The two there's just one other person. That's Iskan. So we can have that kind of sangha, but we need that kind of sangha, and we should be careful. But that that's my point. I I the devotees don't have to go to the temple. But my grandma, he, he went to the temples, and my God, they didn't understand him. Sometimes they would criticize him. Sometimes they harassed him. They did so many things, but he tolerated so much. And he told me, Prabhupada said to him, you tolerate, 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 cooperate. And he did that for Prabhupada. And that's, that's the point I'm making. In the mode of goodness, we may see that these people are nonsense. And, and it's correct, they're nonsense. And in the mode of goodness, I may avoid them. But there's something higher than that bhakti in the mode of goodness. And that's when we actually do something for the pleasure of Gurudev. I can leave. I, I have many friends who I, I've been through so many things. Narendra Mars once gave a talk and he said that I have so many reasons I have to leave Iskan. But I stay to serve Srila Prabhupada, to please Srila Prabhupada. So we may, I have so many friends who are sophisticated, they know about bhakti, they know about shastra, they know about rasa shastra, and they got disturbed by, by the, the competition mentality in ISKCON, by the, 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 the male chauvinism, you know, treating women in a certain way, they got disturbed by so many different harsh ways that devotees behave sometimes in the society, and they just couldn't tolerate it. That's in the mode of goodness. They want to associate with something more. But I would suggest there's also another consideration if, if everybody leaves ISKCON, what's going to be the hope? What would Srila Prabhupada want? Does he want everybody to go? Your Guru Maharaj, he's tolerated so many things. He told me so when he was a GBC in Moscow, my God, anybody would just cry. They, they would just melt. They would just be destroyed. And he was doing that for the pleasure of Prabhupada. It wasn't nice. It wasn't a pleasant thing for him at all. So we may not be able to do that. And I'm not suggesting that we artificially go to the temple or try to be a hero and savior and save the world when we're not on that platform. But at least intellectually, we should be able to appreciate it. What do you think, Bajabanita? I agree with you. And I also wanted to add that they also very much de de depend of the you know, char characteristic of individual. Because some person really needs a lot of, you know, community and movement and, you know, all his service may be inside of this, he's teaching, he's giving, but some person doesn't need it at all, right. you know. He just quietly do his service, he doesn't need performance for this, he doesn't need that even anyone knows his name, you know. And then so maybe a third he, he feels feel safe, he feels like you yeah. say, like gopis, because it's something that you want to hide. It's not something that you want to promise. We should appreciate and love all the devotees. They're chanting, and whatever their particular mood, we should respect that. There's a third devotee, too, and that devotee doesn't need the temples. He doesn't need the institution. He doesn't need the prestige or whatever, but he may be traveling and, and with great difficulty. And I know a number of devotees like this with great difficulty who are suffering 
putting up with so much, excuse my American English, but putting up with so much crap, saying in the institution, because if they go, then what's going to be the hope? My grandma's is like that. And he told us we should work to help uphold the prestige of Prabhupada's mission. And he told us we're not staying in ISKCON because it's good for you. You're not staying here because you like it. But we stay there because we want to serve Prabhupada. And honestly speaking, I do like it. I do like that service. And I do find a lot of friends like, like we have with us tonight, my night here, here in this Sangha. There's so many wonderful devotees. And I find Brajabhanita for myself that when I travel, I go places. Sometimes devotees don't understand us. They don't appreciate. Or sometimes maybe even more painful, like Brajabhanita, uh, uh, Binda Sundari was commenting. Sometimes devotees, they say, oh, we're so happy that you've come. And we want you to come every time. And they just say, they don't give a damn what they're saying. They don't really mean it. They're just saying some nice thing to try to control you. And that's even more painful. But still I go there and it's really painful. And I complain sometimes to Krishna Kun. But then one devotee comes and knocks on our door. He says, well, you know, that class meant so much to me. And they come in and they start crying. Because, you know, I just don't fit in. And I, they want me to have a counselor. I don't want to have a counselor. They're trying to force me on. And I just can't fit in. And what can I do? And then I realize, oh, Krishna sent me here for this devotee. And I've had that experience so many times all over the world, wherever we've gone. We've had intellectuals and artists and devotees coming to us and crying because they can't fit into the institution. And I want to be there for them also. And then that, that's given me so much happiness. And I think it pleases my groomers. And by the way, there are some places like Ypsilanti, which I actually like very much. In some parts of Hungary, I like very much. Some parts, I, I think I would probably like Denver, Colorado very much. There's some nice places in Czechoslovakia, believe it or not, that I like. Not all of them, but there's some sanghas that I do like. And uh, that, that I, I'm really inspired to go and associate with. And some other places I go to, and oh my God, they say they give you the stage and they, they give a whole long talk. And this is, they, a lot of times they read. It's so annoying, they read. Madhavananda Das joined ISKCON in 1982 in Los Angeles, and he, and, 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 oh my God, what, what, what is that? I mean, just, just say two words, you know, I like this guy. I hope everybody listens to him. I, I would rather you said that, isn't it? <laughs> so it's something we tolerate, but we're all different. And Brajabhani, so you're just fine. We, you, you just, we like you just the way, but you, the only, the only change I would advocate in anybody is we should all try to listen to the holy name more, and we should all try to be introspective more, and Krishna will guide us in our heart, and how he guides each individual devotee will be different, and we shouldn't try to insist that everybody's all the same. Some people, as strange as it may sound, some people like cats, right? <laughs> and they might even still be devotees. Some of those devotees were, were disciples of Srila Prabhupada with their cats and whatever. So, okay. Thank you, Brajabhani. I, I want to keep moving. Uh, Bhakti thank Reed, you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Bhakti Reed, you want to you share any thoughts? I was looking at it behind you there. It looks like uh, you've uh, done some more work on your place. Yeah. It looks like Gobar all over the walls, is it? It's not what just a satisfying Gobar. smile on your face. <laughs> it's not just Gobar, but it's a good, good mix of uh, Gobar and clay and sand plastered on. But so, but I, I wish you were here or, or Jai Gore or something. You know, my, my thought today, I, I, I'm really thinking about, I, today I, I, I did a little bit of work in the garden and I had to use the drill and a couple things and I had to find the tools and organizing his tools. My father was really good. He was so neat. He's one of those guys with all his hammer on the hook and all the different tools. And I was thinking the day that, that I should make a little corner in our uh, garage downstairs with all the tools and put things in a nice, neat way, at least until Jai Gore comes and he'll just destroy it, throw, you know, things here and there and make a big mess out of it. <laughs> but I was thinking it'd be really nice to have just a little work corner, tool corner. Anyway, I'm sorry. You have some comments, Reed? Yeah. Some reflection. I was appreciating all the devotees reflection is really nice to have this kind of sangha but uh, my own uh, you know what i'm taking away from is the point that he said sevananda is a higher happiness than premananda 
And devotees, they're not actually interested in the happiness that comes from Premananda. They just want to serve the Lord. It was nice to hear. Yeah, that's the, that's the best. And there's a, such a wonderful uh, description in uh, the uh, Kartik Mahatmya of, of the Padma Purana, quoted in uh, Hari Bhakti Dilas, that one of the fruits or one of the one of the great uh, austerities you can do, one of the great things to get so much benefit during Kartik is to serve the Vaishnavas. I, I like that so much. <laughs> serve the Vaishnavas in some way. Such a wonderful thing. Thank you, Reed. I, I hope I can see your house there sometime. That's really, really cool. I, I like that that Gobar look. It's really, really yeah. good. It's just it's, and it's it's one of the it's one of the rooms in the house on the farm project we have in Ipsy. Goloka Premadam. I just, uh, but you know, one I thing I like, I, I've been to some, some, some communities where they, they like, they have everything, go bar walls and mud and whatever like that. And we don't have any internet and we don't have any machines or whatever. And it's kind of weird to me in a way, you know, I mean, personally, I'd like to have good internet <laughs> <laughs> and good electricity <laughs> also, maybe with solar panels or some natural way, wind or something. But uh, I, I want to have those things because that's practical. It's the world we live in today. I like seeing both. Hare Krishna Puji. Natalia, do you want to share something? And then maybe uh, Bana Biharani, so nice to see you. Then maybe Bana and Jai Gore. Natalia, do you have anything? Are you there? Yes, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. I was thinking also about this that Sivananda is higher than Premananda, but um, I connected it. Like with some experience, when when we have really service, we don't depend on on somebody's mood or which prem prem can come just for us. But if we have seva, it is uh, it it guides us uh, to new new aims, new goals, and we are always connected with the object of our service and uh, uh, ideas come mm. constantly how to serve better and better and better and in only in this case it is uh, really not not possible to fall out of uh, of spiritual world only if we have this some service what a great comment thank you you know it reminds me sometimes someone may go to a forest and they just see and they say, yeah it was a bunch of trees you know, but uh, you go and you talk to the trees, you, you touch the trees and you see them. Each, each tree is a different individual. And so, similarly, some people, they, they come and they think, oh, Iskan means all these people. And Iskan means, you know, we were just saying, it means maybe some obnoxious manager or something like that. But Iskan is so many individuals. And let me see those individuals. And I can see that when I do individual service. When my consciousness is in a certain way, and maybe I can't do that, as we were just saying with Brajabani, to maybe I, I you know, this is not possible. For, that's okay also. We see Jamuna, it was really hard for her. I, I spoke with her personally about that once. I, I said, in the beginning, I, I've read everybody used the same bathroom. They were wearing the same clothes. The men and the women were wearing the same clothes. They had this yellow cloth. You can see it in the pictures. And the ladies would make it into a sari, and the men would wear, wear it as a dhoti. And everybody had the same cloth. And the ladies would give class, the men would give class, the ladies would lead kirtan, the men would lead kirtan. It was all like that. And I said, it sounds so nice. What happened? And we had a long talk. And she told me some history about Iskan and things and how it was very discouraging for her. It broke her heart because she came because of Srila Prabhupada and her personal relationship. And so at a certain point, she just went away from that. And at one point, it was just her and Dina Tarani. But then later on, in my perspective of Jamuna anyway, later on, she entered again into the assembly of devotees in a different kind of way with the youth. And she found devotees that, that she could inspire and she could work with, especially young girls like Janavi and others. And she empowered them and worked with them. And so she was part of things, but she wasn't part of things. She, she wasn't part of the GBC. She wasn't part of the whole management things. She was working with the society in a different way. And that's such a beautiful thing if we can do that. Because there's so many devotees, just like all of us, feel fried sometimes when we go to the temple 
and and the temple president says, hey, so good to see you. We haven't seen you in a long time. And, and we feel in our heart, well, actually, this is not bad. He's kind of being nice. And then his next sentence says, and we're hoping you could give a donation. And, you know, oh God, they're not caring about me. They just want something out of me or something. And you feel really sad. So there's so many devotees who feel like that. So we understand the purpose of the temple is there to train new people, to preach and whatever. But we need to have some small intimate sanghas. So I really liked your, your comment there. Let me um, read something here from uh, Binda Sundari. She says, based on the quote by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati talk where the Krishna Kun posted, I can see that I had a tinge of material satisfaction when getting appreciation and respect that people would want to serve me. And therefore I was hurt by motivated appreciation. Mm -hmm. And on the Pioneer comments, Binda Sundari, thank you for reflection on this quote, immediate introspection. Nice. That's why we're doing all this. So um, let's go to Barnaby Harney. Do you have any any reflection you want to sh share? So nice to see you. Is Jai Gore being nice? Is he being good? Yes, bro. Yeah. yeah that's that's my service. I, I have to. I have. I have to ask that question every week. You know, make sure that he's 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 towing the line. Yeah, he's. Do you have any reflection nice. today? Um. Well. I was also, I was thinking about, I think many devotees mentioned it, but I'll just share anyway. I was thinking about, um, you know, if I look at my other motivations for practicing bhakti, it can be a little discouraging and, you know, what is the value of my service kind of thing. But you you answered that when you were speaking to Maya Parchandra Prabhu and saying that we're, um, we can serve the Vaishnavas and that these these higher stages of bhakti are coming like that and that way it's very hopeful so yeah yeah so i i i think about you i was thinking about you recently and in, in there in ypsilanti and it's not easy being in the west and some but you're in such a good situation because i i my impression is you're doing kirtan quite a bit and you're serving the devotees you're serving your guru Maharaj, you're serving Srila Prabhupada. And we have problems, all of us, we're, you know, who amongst us is perfect. But if we're in such a situation, everything's good. <laughs> yes. I look forward to having a discussion with you in a few days, too. Jai Gore, do you have any, any reflection? You want to wrap it up? Uh, I, sure. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about uh, what kind of latching on to what you were speaking about with, with uh, Leela Prashut and Peru and Vrinda Sindri. Um, I often think about like uh, how it's it seems really difficult when I analyze it myself to separate like um, personal pleasure or personal self interest from your 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 devotional practice um, because I don't know if I'm over analyzing it or anything like that but it just always seems like when you like when you boil down to it that there there is self-interest in there um and it's really really difficult to get rid of i was thinking even even you know you're thinking like i'm doing this for krishna's pleasure but the, it, you know in the back of the mind there's like some understanding that like um really there's no other way for me to live this is the best way to live um, my life is in alignment with, with um, you know, the desires of the devotees and the desires of Krishna and that, that I'll, I will get the most out of that um, ultimately also. And as like, is that different or maybe more subtle to, to understand that like, uh, my, you know, is it better to, to, to see when I align my, like it's good for me to align my desires with Krishna's desires. Is that like a more subtle thing than just kind of like, uh, what was I going to say? Then what you were, you were speaking about with kind of like that juxtaposed to, you know, just like uh, the example you're giving of someone just, uh, you know, learning someone's likes and dislikes just so that they can kind of uh, get something out of them. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think like that sometimes. That's in the mode of goodness, and we should recognize it. That what else can I do? 
this is the best program for me. And we may say, oh, I have so many material desires. I, I have so many faults. I've made so many mistakes. But at the same time, intellectually, we can understand that this is the best situation for me. And that's bhakti in the mode of goodness. That, that, that's that's uh, saguna bhakti. It, there's some motivation for myself. It's not motivated for the Lord. Bhakti means just for the Lord's motivation. It's such an amazing thing. And how can we cultivate that? You, you can't imitate that. We can hear about it intellectually, as we are tonight, and that will help us. But ultimately, we have to, to dive deep in the holy name and through the, the process of chanting and serving at the same time, because that service is an expression of the holy name, expression of our chanting, the chanting and service, our hearts will become purified and we'll actually come to that. But we should always be trying to listen just like in a relationship, you, you know, you, with Bonnaby Harney, you can be in a mode of goodness and say, okay, I made money. I, here I am. I'm listening to you, rolling your eyes in your head. <laughs> You're speaking to me. For so I'm listening to you. I'm a good husband. I bought you a new sari. I'm a good husband. But that's not, that's not going to give her satisfaction. Satisfaction she'll get when, when she sees that you're thinking about her desire, when you understand her subtle mood. And similarly with you. Same thing in all of our relationships. It's like that, and that's the same thing with Krishna. Is that helpful? You have any any further thought on that, Jagra? Yeah, um, I was I, I was just thinking. Is it so to say to say that um, you know when when my desires are in line with Krishna's desires, does that mean I'm acting purely you know in in interest of Krishna's pleasure? Or yeah, like, is it just semantics to say that, you know, it, it's different from acting purely for Krishna's pleasure when I'm saying like my desires are in line with Krishna's desires and, and I'm just acting for Krishna's pleasure. Are those the same thing or? I'm not sure if I understand it. You, you're, we may be dovetailing something and that's like our, our goodness. Our does what? I don't know, maybe it's just uh, overanalyzing it. Like when I'm just uh, having trouble um, understanding how, you know, your own personal desire could could not become part of the equation at, at some point. You know what I mean? It's almost unfathomable. Okay. Um, well, in Bhakti Sundarva, Jiva Goswami speaks about Sakama Bhaktas, like ourselves. Mm -hmm. And he says that there's two types of bhakti, sakaitaba and akaitaba, or cheating bhakti and bhakti that's not cheating. And bhakti that's cheating, one of them is we're trying to pretend that we're a pure devotee. And we're, we're, we're not analyzed. We're trying to act like something that we're not. So better that, that, that our material desires come into the equation and that we can face them, we can come before the Lord in the mood of Prahlad Maharaj, Yadida Shyasi May Kaman Vadam Stvam Darshaba, praying you please take away these material desires, not so that I, I'll be peaceful, not so that I'll be pure, but so that I can serve you in a better way, so that I can understand your desire. Otherwise, I can't. It, it causes, and that's, that's, it causes me pain in the heart when I have those, those desires. And I, I think it's better when devotees, they can acknowledge that sometimes devotees they, they so many of us come and so many of the devotees get married with certain desires that they don't even recognize they're, they're just hiding like little gremlins you know in the, inside the walls or something and, and uh, all of a sudden they come out after some years i really wanted a nicer car i wanted you know a wife who's going to make pizza for me every day i wanted to this or that and, and we didn't even really weren't conscious of it in the beginning so we, we should try to see those things be honest with ourselves, but that's not our goal. Our purpose is not to, to see all of our material desires and focus on the material desires, of course, but we should see those things and see where we're at and then, then understand this is why I'm having problems. This is why I'm not advancing. This is why I'm not practicing bhakti yet. Is that okay? Yeah, bro. I was just, um, yeah, I think I was just kind of overanalyzing the whole thing that we were kind of talking about that, that you know, um, just, just kind of focusing on the fact that your, your desires merge with, with like 
the desires for your your pleasure and the desires for Krishna's pleasure kind of merge together at some point. Yeah. Like, uh, and, yeah. Yeah, I, I, on the mode of goodness in, in, in Vanasham Dharma, we want to try to understand Shastra and what would the Lord like me to do? And then I want to have desires to behave in the mode of goodness and be a good married husband and, and make, make a living in an honest way and, and grow food and, and make a nice house and whatever. That Those are good. Those are coming in line with the Lord in one way. But in a deeper way, ultimately, then I want to understand what does Krishna want? And it's such a deep thing. We were speaking the other day, the gopis of Vrindavan, they're independent thinkers independent that they're not following the, the thinking of, of all the Vanashram Wallas and all the, the society. They're different. They don't want anything. They just want Krishna's pleasure. That's real independent thinking. <laughs> and that kind of independent thinking we want to cultivate. We want to understand what is Krishna's pleasure. And we understand that by trying to understand Gurudev's pleasure, by trying to think of Gurudev all the time and how can we please him, thinking of the Vaishnavas and we serve them. And they may be big Vaishnavas, they may be small Vaishnavas, but we, when we go to visit Bhakta Reed, you know, what, what would he like? Oh, I'll bring a big bucket of Gobar. Nice go bar. <laughs> and that may be the nicest thing anybody brought to him all day long. You made me like that better than, than you know, a, a ham radio or <laughs> something. Who knows? <laughs> but we should think about the devotees and, and, and especially in our relationships where we're trying to do this with bhakti. So, you know, you should be thinking about your wife. How can I please her? What are her subtle desires and not the material desires? But how can I, and also her material desires, but how can we dovetail that? How can we make advancement in Krishna consciousness? How can we focus more on bhakti and understand what we're, we're the, the other person's at? And those are our relationships. That, that's our friendship with different devotees. That's, those are our, our loving dealings. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right. So thank you very much to everybody. It's nice to see you. Can I, can everybody like see everybody's face for just one second? The very end here. You can turn on your cameras. Hare Krishna. Nice to see everybody again. And Gorni Taiprabhu. Ujjwala Rasika. Ujjwala Rasika can't do anything. So nice to see everybody. Thank you all so much for taking part. It, it, this this also forgives me so much hope. You know, all of you, some of you, Brajabhana, too, you're complaining about what it's like in the temples. And I know. And that's why we started this program. Because I'm just going to die. If it's only if I can only speak in the temples and then they just read something. I, I just just two words. I want to tell you that I have kind of sangha. Some also, you know, I'm connection by phone. Some people who left our temple and we are connected. We really meeting. We have very rare meetings, you know, because it's all kind of. But I know what I tried to say that I know a lot of people who continue practice but left mm. the temples and left their society, so called, because mm. they feel exactly the same like me, yes. same way, because they feel that it's dead, it's deprived of life, and it's you know it's it's lie, it's a lie. You know, Brajabanita, in, in our little WhatsApp discussions. I've marked that, that your comments often inspire the devotees the most. It really touches their heart the most. And so that's, that's bhakti. We, we use what we've gone through to be able to connect with other devotees. And, and, and you can relate to a lot of devotees. A lot of devotees relate to you because they've been through the same thing. So that's Krishna in your heart telling you to associate with those kind of persons and reach out to them. This is, I was telling you, some we go places and people come and they cry sometimes. I've been to temples, it's supposed to be the best temple in the world. And they come to me and say, I don't want to wear the same kind of shoes everybody else is wearing. I don't want to have this counselor they're trying to force me to have. And, and they're just crying. And, and, and I feel so happy. I, I can be there a little bit for somebody. Okay? All right. Thank you all so much. Srila Prabhupada, Kijai, Veda Bhakti Binda, Kijai, Vancha Kalpa, Darubhisha, Kripa Sindhubhya, Vachapadhita, Nam Pavani,